Hello, we're here today with Andrew uh, Bedwell, adventurer, sailor, a really impressive man that I'm excited uh, here to meet, and he can introduce himself now. Hello, so yes, Andrew Bedwell, um, do a lot of sailing, and uh, obviously we're here today to talk about Big Sea Atlantic Challenge, um, to break the record for the smallest vessel to cross the Atlantic. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to meet you, Andrew. Uh, just no, a quick likewise. note that we're going to be doing this interview over Zoom, so uh, it's an exciting format that usually allows people to connect over uh, long distances. In this case, Andrew is, uh, is currently Zooming in from England, where it is, uh, I believe, 4.30 or 5.30 p.m. So uh, let's start with the easy question, Andrew. Uh, when did you learn how to sail and kind of what draws you to this sport and uh, the open water? Um, so I first learned to sail um, because my parents had a chandlery um, in England, down south. So what I, we did was we had um, toppers and things like that. So they were always around. So whenever I, I did, whenever I could, I just took one out. Um, drawn to water, originally, um, I think I was six months old when I had my first proper experience in a, a boat and that was um, a, my dad's offshore power race power boat so um, that started it all off and basically from then on I have always been into a water sport of some side and some aspect whether it be um, power boat racing zap cat thrill uh, boats sailing kite surfing but every which time I seem to find I navigate my way back to being at sea so just love the sea and the power of it and its rawness. Yeah, that's a really fascinating and really powerful words that I think a lot of people drawn to the water can appreciate. So now I want to talk to you about uh, your plan for your journey across the Atlantic. So if you were, if you saw me in an elevator, give me your maybe elevator pitch for this journey and some of the quick details for it. Uh, right, if I was in an elevator discussing with someone who hadn't got a clue, I'd first of all say it's going to be like going across the uh, ocean in a wheelie bin while being strapped onto the world's best roller coaster for probably 70 days. What more couldn't you like about it? Okay, so one thing that we can talk about first is just how are you going to get uh, food? How are you going to have enough food to last you the entire journey? Yeah, so what uh, I've chosen to do, and this is m a part of my team, they would like me to do something different, but I've just, I want to have no support vessel that is close to me. Um, I don't want anyone coming back at the end of it going, oh, but he had support, he had this, he had that. So I've been very definite that I want to have a vessel that is at least 24 hours away from me. Um, then that way, no one can say, do you know what? He's been taken off and sat on a deck all day long and blah, blah, blah. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm on my own. I will have all my own food on board. So my wife's going to be baking some, they're kind of a nutritional um, food substance. She's not within earshot, so I can say it. They're pretty vile, but they do the job. But what we're doing is we're wrapping them in individual bags and then we're literally molding them into the hull um, all the way around. So square bars in odd shapes don't work. So we're molding them in before we send the boat out to St. John's, Newfoundland. Um, so they're gonna be in there for a while. So they've got to obviously not be perishable and then they've got to last me for the passage. So they'll all be put into there. But then as well, what we've got is um, I've got uh, a very small water bladder there on board and a water maker. So I'll be making my own water as I go along. Um, obviously 90 days water is a phenomenal volume of water. So that wasn't happening. We weren't doing that. It's reliant on water makers. So you mentioned just now that you're starting from uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, Labrador. How do you plan on getting your boat across the Atlantic? Uh, just, just getting it there logistically. Logistically, there's huge things that we've got to overcome. Um, one way is sail it, which I ain't doing. I am not sailing it there. <laughs> it will be being shipped there. Um, we're in early conversations with a company who might be doing the shipping and support for it there. 
but it will be containerized and sent out. Um, there is another very, very slight chance that I'm involved in another uh, world record team. I'm only on the crew of this and my vessel may be going out with theirs as well. So there's, there's lots of things in the air at the moment about it. That's cool. Uh, so how are you going to go to the bathroom when you're on this boat? You know, earlier I said, I know there's going to be one question yeah. I can predict you're going to answer. That's it. So um, what we've got is obviously for harbour close to shore, I don't want to do it. I don't want to put anything in the water. So I have got a small little bladder bag in there. Um, so that will be usable. Um, then the food that we're taking is really, really low on um, fibre and everything. So although I've got to have bowel movements, bladder movements, um, I will be lowering that right down just because of the food intake. Um, I know it works. I know I've done it before in other situations. And so I know I'll be able to do that. So don't worry, we're not going to litter the um, Newfoundland coastline with we and what's it. So no, we're not doing that. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. I, I know all my Canadians will <laughs> like to hear that, that you're keeping it contained. I think yeah. uh, moving past some logistical things, one of the most difficult challenges from this journey could be all the time you're going to be spending alone. So have you done any yeah. mental preparation to get you ready for your like two plus months being by yourself? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, generally I don't have a lot of problems with a mental mind state. I do kind of just kind of chill myself down and relax myself so much so that I don't actually let a lot of things cram my mind and things. Um, I think it's because I've always had odd times off within my work and my business. So I've always done a lot of things on my own. And I've spent 30, 30 odd days at sea um, on my own anyway, um, in, not in smaller vessels, at smaller vessels as this, but Still, we're talking a um, six meter vessel that I took up into the Arctic. In fact, that picture behind me um, shows one of the pictures. That's not Arctic, but that's Iceland. But um, I don't have a problem with that. Um, all my friends know me well enough that they think I can just literally focus on a product, project and that will be me sorted. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna let my mind wander and worry that. That's that really, I don't have to worry about. Okay, so what are some lessons that you've taken away from previous journeys, like the one uh, into the Arctic, that you, you're going to use and apply in this one, uh, journey? Um, there's lots of them, lots of them. Um, sea states, obviously, I always, whenever, sorry, I don't know why I said sea states then. Whenever I leave harbour, what I do is I get myself straight away into a sleeping routine, straight away. So literally, even if I go out for two days, um, I 90% of the time go out solo anyway, um, unless my little daughter comes with me and she's only nine anyway, so it's almost like being solo. But um, what I do is I literally, as soon as I've got a tack that I know I'm not going to hit anything, worst case scenario, if I fell asleep for a longer period of time, I will get straight into a sleep um, routine. Um, I've never had to, have, I've never had problems with it. And I just find that as soon as I leave the harbour and I'm on a tack that is not going to um, hit anything if I fall asleep or anything, I can then just fall straight to sleep for that half an hour. Um, and it worked well, 20 minutes, half an hour. And then if worst case scenario, I've been at times where the sea's been so horrendous that I've had to stay awake for two days and, um, solidly at the helm. And um, if you need to do that, you need to do it. Yeah, so... Uh... Obviously, in the open ocean, there's going to be a lot of rough conditions, like you mentioned. So what is your yeah. plan and preparations for if you sail into a storm? Right. Um, well, I'm, what I'm doing is, as per all of my trips, adventures, whether it be on land, on sea, plan for the worst. The, if you plan for the worst and it never happens, brilliant. So never let anything shock you. So what I do is I've made it so that the vessel... I can completely seal the vessel down. So I can put my hatch down, completely seal it. I've got a full harness. Well, in the actual vessel at the moment, I haven't, but in, my, in the mock-up that we've got in the workshops, I've got a full harness so I can just literally lock myself in, 
as you see, my dome sits about here on me. So I've got this dome over my head. And to stop my head banging around in there, I've got a padded hat that I wear. Um, so, um, but what the other thing with it is, I've only got 45 minutes of air in there. So on the front of the vessel in front of me, I've got literally two handholds that I can twist and that turns my derades around. So what I can do is I turn one into the wind, one away from the wind, pull the strap down to open it, and that opens the flaps up. If a wave should hit it, they're like a butterfly flap, and it will just literally slam them shut. So I've got that on there. Um, so we know that we can survive it. I've on purpose designed it so that it will, and it can roll if it needs to. Um, there were initially we looked at it and did a load of um, scale modeling with it and we found if it had a really deep cord between the deck and the and the keel it kind of did this really odd motion to throw you around it was it was a really sick making motion so what we've done is we've actually brought it really close together so it's taken down its stability a little bit but now it allows the boat to actually float like a cork so yes we know and i know it's going to be rolled numerous times in storms and things like that but i know also that it's going to come to the surface it's going to sit there and then it's going to carry on there's hundreds and hundreds of design options and design routes that we could have gone down um we just felt that this was going to be the best for comfort and safety obviously yeah so if it capsizes at sea are you going to be able to just get get it uh, up yourself Design. I don't have to do it. Oh, I just okay. literally sit in it and it will come back up. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, um, what it will do is it will literally, if it turns inverted, currently I've had myself standing on the deck, heeling over as far as I can, as well as another guy who's got 16 stone on it as well. And it will get it a lot longer over, but it's still right. Wow, that sounds like some really clever engineering. <laughs> so, well, cross fingers as well on that. <laughs> yeah, and do you, are you gonna have like a satellite telephone just in case, or any yeah. communication device? Yeah. Anyway, um, so it's obviously gonna comply with all um, the Coast Guard and Maritime um, Safety Agent safety uh, requirements. So we've got VHF, VHF, sorry. We've got a um, Class B transponder, AIS, so that's pinging the whole time. I will also have personal PLB as well. Then we're in conversations with sat phone company, and there may be, depending if we get um, the sponsor that we're looking for to come on board, there may be a way that we can do um, uh, live streaming from the vessel as well, which would be amazing. So. It's quite complicated, it's, and it's expensive, but it depends on what the sponsor wants. Can you talk to me more about who the potential sponsor is or if you're working with any foundations to help, uh, help you with this process? Um, not at the moment. We've got, there are talks with some sponsors that we're talking to. Um, they're at their initial stages. What we wanted to do was actually get the vessel out there and get it to people to see what's going on with it. So what we've done is we've had incredible take up from it. Um, in the UK, it's been in basically all the newspapers. Um, it's been on most of the news channels. It's just gone mental. Um, we have had some sponsorship companies turn us down when we originally spoke to them right at the beginning. Um, we just now thinking that they may have regretted turning us down because there was one big um, uh, beverage company, I should say, that uh, turned us down. Um, and yeah, we, we, I personally think they might just be kicking themselves a little bit now because they, the figures on the viewing and the interest level has just gone minus on. Oh, that's good to hear for uh, your end, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, very good, very, very good. <laughs> What's been the most uh, difficult part of this process? Um, I think kind of convincing everyone initially when we started it, that it was gonna happen. Um, my wife knows that when I put my head on into something, 
it go it goes ahead and i i will do everything to make it um touch wood i've never had anything that i haven't been able to do um so i don't want this to be the one that uh, i can't do but i don't think i can't do it i'm 100 percent convinced that i can do this one thing that keeps coming up is that you seem like you have something to prove or that at least like at the very least you like a challenge and you like to yeah. put yourself in positions that force you to grow. So why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. I, I truthfully don't know. It's just something within me that always gets me and wants me to do better. Um, it's, uh, it's like everything I do. If I, I ride a lot of motorcycle trials and so I'll go out and I will push myself as hard, absolutely as hard as I can. When I go sailing, I do the same. When, whenever I'm doing anything, I push myself as hard as I can. It's it's just a personal achievement that I want to do. It's um, it, it's it's just something that I want to do. It's it's in there, and it it's not it's, it would eat at me if I didn't. So is that why you chose the Atlantic specifically to sail across in such a small vessel? Um, it combines everything. It's got obviously the rawness, the adventureness, the extreme side of things, sailing, uh, Atlantic. What more can you, you couldn't ask for any more, could you? <laughs> no, I don't think you could. It sounds like a lot of fun. Even though yeah, you'll, you'll have to be. go through some tough times maybe. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you plan for those, that all the rest of it works. Mm -hmm. It's when people don't prepare for the right amount. We've had on social media, I've had some, I've had, we've roughly checked it today. I've had about 99% of absolute positive comments. There are the odd one that says, oh, crazy, why do this? But if we don't do anything in life, what's the point in living? We're here, um, everyone likes a challenge. Now, whether it be just to have enough in yourself to pop out to the shops, because some people physically can't do that. That's not me. I need to put myself at the far end of the spectrum and challenge myself harder. And that's what I've always done. And that's what my wife and daughter, they just know. They know that's the way I am. Yeah, it must be hard for them sometimes when you want to go on these crazy adventures. <laughs> um, I think I've made their lives harder, but on the other hand, I've made it very, very much richer for them as well. My daughter, she's only nine. Um, uh, in fact, actually, her words, it's been our Father's Day a couple of days ago here. Um, so um, she wrote on a card, um, basically, that she couldn't have had the better, any better dad just because I introduced her to so many things that most kids only dream about. Age two, she was riding her own motorbike. Um, age uh, four, uh, three, I have her up in the garden on parachute. She comes out sailing with me. She does everything. So she's a little, uh, I tell you what, I'd watch out for her in the future. <laughs> I've got a funny feeling my mini trans app might do something quite special with her on one day. Wait and see. Yeah. Hopefully we get to uh, see that happen. I do. Uh, so do I. So do I. So do what, I. Are you, what are you most uh, scared, of, scared of on the trip? Um, I'm not really scared as such of anything because my mind makes me think, what is the worst, what is the, the biggest things I've got to watch out for? Obviously, horrendous sea states with shipping around are the ones that you've got to really watch out for. So is I've made sure that I've got as much on the vessel to keep me safe as possible. Um, yes, if I'm... Uh, in a false 10, which you could be, um, with my AIS, with waves that are 60 foot tall, 50 foot tall, my AIS is pinging off and I'm seeing a ship come to, coming towards me or maybe not even seeing a ship coming towards me. I'll be scared then, um, <laughs> but I will have done as much as I can to get it sorted. Now I do also know that um, Tom McNally, who started the design and the build, sorry, who designed this and started the build on this, he was hit by a ship in his one. He cracked it all the way around the side of the vessel, but he carried on. He carried on and did it. Um, I've seen lots of pictures from him, and 
even his daughters, when I talk to them, they say that they can see me in the way he was. So they're all positive and behind it as well. Yeah, that's really cool. I really enjoyed hearing about why you were drawn to challenges in life and how that kind of makes you into a better person for yourself and your family. That's a really powerful yeah. stuff. Yeah, it is. It is. But it's like anyone, as I say, everyone, uh, most people like a little challenge or like a challenge. It may be monstrous to them, but seems small to other people. So it's just about making for itself, do things to make yourself feel better and to push yourself. Okay, is there anything uh, else you want to add for today? Anything you want to talk about? No, I'm all right with all that. You've, you seem to have covered an awful lot of it. Yeah. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's just something that, obviously, if you, if you hear of anything, anyone that wants to sponsor us, we're up there. Um, obviously, on Facebook, Big Sea Atlantic Challenge. Um, and then also on um, YouTube, again, just type Big Sea Atlantic Challenge in. We pop up everywhere at the moment. So, um, yeah, get, get behind us, share far and wide, and make the most of it. Okay, definitely. It was great having you here today. Thank you for joining Brilliant. us. Brilliant. And i tell you what, why don't you come and do the interview in the UK when I finish? Okay, or I can come up to <laughs> Newfoundland when you start, see how you're doing then, if the nerves have kicked No problems. <laughs> no worries. Let's cover it all both ends. Yeah. We're sorted. <laughs> Brilliant. like fun. Thanks for being Brilliant. here today. And i tell you what, here are this. He's the most important person. Yeah, let's meet. Oh, That's hey my, little, hey. my little, That's... My little um, daughter. Her first adventure was we quite often go out and we go um, wild camping. So, oh, well, no, she was two and a bit when she started riding her motorbike. Um, and um, then we quite often go out onto the mountains and we just sleep in um, bivy bags just on the mountains. Um, and you love it, don't you? In fact, I actually asked her last week. Where would you rather sleep? Would you be in your bed or in the mountains? Mountains. There you are. Oh. So yeah. Yeah. This is the one you've got to watch. That's great. <laughs> My kid did a good